much and welcome to everyone. I hope that you can hear me quite well. Everything is okay, then you can see myself also at the same time uh, and that you will enjoy this, uh, this live tasting session uh, all together. Um, so first, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Nicholas. I'm based in France and um, I am uh, I'm, I'm actually sourcing uh, French wines for a lot of distributors and importers around the world, including Wine Connection. I'm very proud of this partnership that we've started uh, quite a long time ago, and we are currently sourcing a lot of, uh, a lot of French wine for them, uh, always based on, the, on, let's say, finding uh, very representative estates, uh, locally based for quite a long time and offering quality and good quality and price profiles uh, to all their consumers and uh, including yourself. So very proud to be part of this live tasting session organized by Angela. Um, so let's talk today about one product that we've been sourcing for Wine Connection for over two years now uh, that is called Chateau Pouilly. Uh, Puy means a, a lot in France because it actually rings, it might ring a bell uh, to a few people. Puy is actually well known uh, for an appellation that is related uh, to this name called uh, Puy Fuissé. Uh, we have to be careful because in France it exists two uh, appellations that, has, that have the, 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 the name Puy uh, in it, Puy Fumé in the Loire Valley that is uh, actually made out of Sauvignon Blanc uh, grape and Pouilly Fuissé uh, that is actually based in Burgundy uh, that we are going to talk uh, about today because Chateau Pouilly is actually from the uh, Pouilly Fuissé AOC uh, based in, in Burgundy. So let's start a little bit with Pouilly Fuissé. What is this appellation? So let's uh, talk first about Burgundy. You may know where uh, Burgundy is based in France, in the, in the east part, center uh, east part of France. It covers actually a lot of different areas from north uh, where it starts with Chablis. You may have heard uh, about Chablis. So it starts from Chablis and then it goes down to the Macon region. Um, and you have a Côte de Nuit, Côte de Bonne, Côte Chalonnaise in between, and then Macon. And within the Macon, uh, let's say the, the, the best, uh, maybe well-known uh, white wine coming from Macon is actually the Pouilly Fuissé. It's really in the center of this Macon region. And it's very well-known because it's a very famous uh, white wine, uh, very well-recognized uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, and in comparison with some other Burgundy wines, it offers a lot of what we call minerality. And so that's the specificity of this Pouilly uh, Fuissé appellation uh, that we are going to talk about today. So this appellation, very quickly, so based in the Macon, made of 100% Chardonnay. It's only an appellation dedicated to white wine. Only white wine are produced in this appellation. This AOC is dated from 1936, so quite a long time. Um, there is no Premier Cru, Grand Cru inside this appellation, which is very rare. In Burgundy, you have a lot of Premier Cru, Grand Cru, uh, Terroir. In this appellation, you don't, don't have that, that, that kind of thing. Uh, ah, there is. Hello? It's okay? Yeah, yeah, you're back. You were bugging a bit, but we can hear you now. Ah, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, so that, that's, that's about the, the, the Puy Fuissé, unless you want uh, to talk uh, uh, more about this appellation. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a little bit what, what it represents today um, in France and within the, uh, the wine business and the wine industry. So now let's talk about the product by itself. The product selected within this appellation is called uh, so Chateau Puy. So how can we not represent the best, the Puy Fuissé, when we are called <laughs> uh, Chateau Puy? So why? But because they have been actually the first ones, um, more or less there. Uh, the Chateau Puy is a, a beautiful estate that has been uh, actually created and made. And you can see the chateau in the middle of, of first 
the uh, Puyi uh, village. And in the middle of Chateau Puyi, of the Puyi village, you have a chateau called Chateau Puyi. It's been one of the first chateaux uh, made there in, 50, in 1951, sorry, 1551, sorry. Uh, and uh, that is now owned uh, by the same people and the same family for seven generations. Uh, the particularity of this Chateau Pouilly is that it's um, uh, actually surrounded uh, by its vineyard, which is quite rare. Sometimes in France, you have a lot of vineyards, more or less in different places around, of course, uh, your, your, your lo location. Uh, but it's very rare to have one, really one site uh, with the chateau in the middle and all surrounded by, by, this, um, and by the vineyard. Uh, so Chateau uh, Puyi today, uh, as I said, is only producing one wine. That's the wine that is currently um, distributed by Web Connection. It's called Cuvée 1551 because it's actually the date of, uh, of, the, uh, of the Chateau creation, even if the AOC appeared in 1936. Um, and so according to us and according to Wine Connection, it is the best representation, of course, of, uh, of this appellation uh, and, and, and a great wine. So let's talk a little bit about the wine now, maybe a little bit about the geography. We, we've uh, situated uh, the Burgundy, the, the Puy, uh, the soil. It's a calcareous clay soil um, that is very particular to, the, to, to its famous minerality character. Um, and as I said, it's exclusively made from uh, Chardonnay grapes. Uh, we discussed about vineyards, seven hectares. Uh, the vineyard is run in the very traditional way. You have a, quite a lot of old vines. What we call old vines is vines that are over 50 years old. Uh, and everything is made by hand and still harvested by hand, which is quite rare now in, in, in uh, quite a lot of regions in France. As you know, we, we've... Uh, try to move to a lot of more mechanical uh, harvest. Now, um, in this uh, particular chateau, and because of the tradition, uh, they still uh, work and harvest by end. Uh, let's talk about the vinification, if you are okay, uh, of this wine. Uh, first, the vinification lasts 12 months, which is quite long for white wine. Um, but that you will, uh, of course, understand back from what we are really looking for uh, of this wine. Uh, of course, it's enjoyable at all time during the, the, the aging period in bottle. Um, but the particularity of this wine, like, like other, of course, uh, great white wines from Burgundy, is that you, you can age it for quite a long time. And you can really enjoy it uh, when it's young, but also when it, had, when it has aged for a couple of years in, uh, in, in the bottle. So the vinification lasts 12 months and the wine is only bottled and stored at the chateau. You have no movements at all. And when a wine connection is uh, placing his order, we are uh, getting it directly from the estate, from the cellar when uh, it has never moved before going to, uh, to the shops and to the wine connection restaurants. So uh, a little bit technical, um, you've got the usual alcoholic fermentation, you've got the usual malolactic fermentation, um, and then we vinify uh, uh, part of it in oak barrels. We don't vinify 100% of this wine because it will bring maybe too much uh, oak um, aspects and, and maybe to bringing the wine to a certain, to maybe too heavy in mouth in, uh, um, to, to what we are really looking for. So in terms of vinification, I'm really talking about vinification, only 30% of this cuvee is vinified in oak barrels. Uh, the barrels come from various regions of France uh, and we adapt the toasting degree, what we talk about the toasting degree of, of, the, of the barrels. Uh, and we select them uh, with the cellar master according to what we are looking for for this cuvee and the way we would like to mature it. 20% uh, of the barrels uh, are renewed each year to keep uh, quite a perfect balance between the minerality of the Puy Fusée we'd like to keep and of course the delicate oak flavors that brings you 
uh, the lens uh, sometimes that uh, that we're looking for in uh, for white wines and also uh, the aging capacity uh, so if you're okay Angela we might probably and of course everyone go to the tasting unless you've got some questions before uh, thank you for the, the introduction. So, so far, I, uh, does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask? So either you, before we start tasting, so either you can raise the hand, use the raise hand feature on Zoom, or write down your question in the group chat. Uh, so everybody, normally you should have poured your wine by now. Uh, if you haven't opened it now, I'd recommend doing it right now. So that we can start moving on to the tasting part. Ah, I see Mary's pairing. I'm pouring. <laughs> All right, okay. So I think questions are going to come along later on. So I let you uh, do uh, describe a little bit uh, the wine about Chateau Pouille's wine, etc. So before we we go to the wine, let's uh, just talk about the bottle. Uh, well, the bottle is very uh, let's say traditional and really represent it uh, represent the, the 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 product as uh, as I've just said. Um, well, first you've got the the very famous Burgundy bottle. Uh, that is very famous and well known all over the world that we're using. We're using uh, what we call a dark green or more like a late, uh, uh, how do we call it in Angela, maybe in, in English, I, I'm, I'm afraid I forgot the name of, of this dark uh, green leaf. Uh, I think it's leaf, yes. Uh, green leaf uh, color on, on the bottle. It's like brown, uh, you, you've seen. Uh, the brown bottle, we are using it because we would like the wine to be to age quite a long time. And, and for that, we would like to avoid uh, too much uh, light to come through the bottle. So that's the reason why we're using in comparison with some uh, maybe modern or attractive Chardonnay that you might uh, have in the market uh, that are with clear bottle. Those kind of wines, that's the reason we use brown bottles because we would like uh, to keep uh, as uh, long as possible uh, in good condition. The, for the rest of it, it's quite an heavy bottle. Um, uh, it's also with the, the, the label very traditional. It represents the chateau, uh, as you can see. Uh, you've got a couple of, uh, of um, touch uh, for the like the historical uh, with the 1551. Uh, uh, historical uh, or history of this estate. Um, I like the bottle. I think it's it's uh, it has crossed the, the, the different years and in a proper way, in a good way. Um, and for the moment and for the time being, it, it works quite well. Now let's go to inside, <laughs> if we are okay, and taste what is inside, which is the most important uh, part of it. So let's talk about the the color. If you are taking uh, so your 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 glass and you're putting it, as Angela said earlier on, on a white, uh, um, I mean, just to, to see the better way, if you put it uh, under, let's say, white paper or something like that, on top of a white paper, you, you might see a couple of, uh, I mean, a great color, like yellow, uh, but very bright uh, yellow color. Um, it's quite well, representative of, of uh, let's say, extracted white wine. Um, the more clear uh, you have white wines, sometimes the less um, aging and, and, and work you, you've had on the, on the, on the wine. Uh, of course, the more the color is pronounced, the more uh, we've been working on, on the wine, on the grapes, and, uh, and on its vinification and aging period. So it, it's quite representative of, uh, of a great uh, white wine. Of course, by the time uh, when you will let it age uh, for a longer time, you will see it will become a little bit more yellow and even more yellow than, than it is today. Okay, for the, for the color, let's uh, move uh, to the nose, if you're okay. I just lost, uh, yeah. Um, up. Sorry. So, I'm in front of it. Okay, for the nose, as Angela said, we can have a first little nose and then a second one uh, by just turning around like this your glass and getting, in fact, all the flavors out of the, of the glass uh, more easily. Um, 
it's a very expressive nose um, with uh, a lot of, according to me, it's very personal, of course, as usual, uh, tasting. And you can feel and you can smell whatever you you want to smell at the end and what uh, you will appreciate from the wine. But let's say it's uh, it's quite very expressive with uh, white fruits, uh, also white flowers, a little bit on on the uh, and and vanilla notes uh, that are quite representative of uh, the aging period in in barrels, um, but not too uh, too strong. So it's according to me a very well uh, balanced nose, um, offering you. Uh, 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 quite, uh, let's say, uh, um, wish to, to continue and, and, and to, to bring that in, in your mouth uh, for, for the next step. Um, so uh, let's, let's move to the, to the tasting now. So maybe Angela also um, describe how to taste um, and um, taste the, the, those kind of wines, uh, usually in France. And sometimes when you see professionals, they, they make a very strange noises with their, when they test the wine in their mouth. <laughs> okay. Which is okay. Actually, it's, it's, it's not really uh, beautiful, but at the end, it's, it's just to bring even more flavors in, into your mouth and understand even better uh, what, uh, what it brings and what it gives. So, um, so for me, this wine is very round. It's uh, very concentrated. We can feel this uh, very well concentrated wine, but it has a very good and very well balanced uh, in mouth and uh, mouth. It gives, uh, sorry, a very well balanced uh, mouth with uh, still what we are looking for, meaning a mineral palette, uh, but with uh, few candied uh, notes, uh, from let's say for some people lemon maybe some pineapple aromas but a few aromas like that but candied aromas that are quite representative from the from this uh, appellation it's a great wine i really like it uh, it's one of uh, my favorite from uh, from the this puy fissé uh, and from an appellation that is for me very very uh, good uh, within the burgundy offering, um, as I said, still this fruity minerality aspects and approach uh, with uh, very uh, quite luxury white wines able to age for quite a long time and pair uh, with a lot of things. You can, of course, enjoy it um, with um, starters. You can also enjoy it uh, with uh, strong meals, fish meals, um, even with some uh, poultry, chicken, chicken uh, you can even try even with some cheeses uh, for me it's a it's a very uh, great wine able really to to pair with a lot of uh, of meals according of course of your of your wishes and uh, and and taste um angela i don't know but would if, you uh, recommend um, personally uh, if you have like a, a specific dish that you would like to pair with this when you open this bottle it's like you know what i'm gonna make like <laughs> i'm gonna add my my friends, I, 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 my, my, myself, I am, um, I really like white wines and uh, that's, uh, I would say from, uh, from a long time, I've been a very, uh, I've been a white wine fan. And for me to enjoy white wines, uh, you have to, uh, and those kind of wines, you have to bring them with some meals that are not too strong, not too um, maybe not too spicy or not too, you know, to uh, really give uh, the best uh, out of this wine, this uh, looking for this, this freshness, this minerality that I've described, this fruity. And it's, it's a very, very well-balanced wine. Um, when, if you compare it with very uh, luxury burgundy white wines from the north, or even some Chablis, Premier Cru, or Grand Cru, um, because it's aged for maybe a longer time and because the terroir is not the same, sometimes you've got uh, heavier white wines that are really able to, to, to be paired with, um, with more um, structured meals. Uh, with such kind of wine, for me, uh, 
if you are, um, uh, for example, pairing it with some um, uh, seafood, uh, with some, um, not too spicy. Uh, I know in Singapore, you, <laughs> you've got some very traditional spicy seafood. Uh, but, uh, but with, uh, let's say, not too spicy seafoods, also with, uh, with nice starters, uh, with salads, even with cheese. With cheese, it's, it's just amazing with, uh, with cheese. So you will really get uh, the best out of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nicola. I'm going to go around and see if anybody has some questions regarding the wine, the aging it's done, the grape varietal, or the region, or if they have any comments or any feedback that they'd like to give on the wine. I'm first going to check uh, with Mr. Roger. All right, Mr. Roger, get ready. I'm going to unmute you. Hi, Roger. Bonjour, Roger. Uh, whatever will happen. <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we yes. can hear you, Roger. Okay, um, what are you asking? See if you had, did you manage to find the different aromas that Nicholas men, uh, mentioned, yes, or really, did you find uh, any different ones that maybe we didn't talk about, or uh, or just some feedback um, generally on the wine compared to what you usually drink? Um. Nothing uh, over and above what uh, was being described, but uh, you know, I've, I'm tasting it now, and it's uh, you know, it's a, it, I think it's an excellent wine, um, very you, solid, um, and for you know the cost of it by Singapore standards, I think it's exceptionally good value. I'm very pleased with what I'm tasting now. I have nothing to add, Roger. I just want you as a, my ambassador in Singapore. <laughs> All right. It's an excellent uh, product. Uh, thank you very much. With big pleasure, Roger. And thank you for your uh, great comments. Uh, very appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. I'm going to see maybe if someone else would like uh, to ask a question or have a comment on the wine. Let me see. Uh, maybe with uh, SL Tan, who's a regular on these sessions, we'll see if, I, if they have anything to say. Hi. Hi. Um, thanks, Nicholas. It's a very lovely presentation. Um, I Merci. agree. Yeah, I agree, Roger. It's a very tasty wine for the value and, and whatever you're charging for it. It's good. And then it's got a lot of notes and it's a little bit complex, so it's not too boring to drink. So, great wine. Thank you so much. Uh, um, again, I think, yes, uh, you're right. It's a, it's a very represent, uh, representative wine from this region. Great uh, representation. And, um, and uh, we, we've tried what is not easy, you know, sometimes from, uh, with wine from friends is to try to, to get the people understand really where it comes from and uh, how it's done and if it represents uh, great value. Uh, very difficult when, when you consider that Burgundy covers more than, than, uh, than hundreds of, of different appellations and terroir. It's very, very complicated uh, to, to really know and understand really how it works. Um, I think this uh, choice, this pre-fuss choice made by uh, Wine Connection for me is, is good because you have a great um, uh, balance between the very complex uh, wines coming out of, uh, of, the, of the Burgundy region and, um, and, and also what we are really looking for uh, from, from white wine to be fresh uh, and that's uh, quite easy also to, to, to to taste and, and to enjoy. Um, for me, that's a really good balance and uh, that is done by this estate. All right, thank you, thank you for that comment. Uh, I actually had a question regarding uh, Puy in general. So uh, the Puy Fusé appellation, you mentioned that uh, there's aging in oak. Is it always the case in Puy? Will there always be oak or are there uh, people who decide to not? It's not like mandatory to age it through oak? No, it's not mandatory. And you have a lot of uh, Puy Fuissé uh, producer uh, that are um, 
uh, vinifying uh, if you say white wines without um, either vinifying it in in barrels uh, even partially or totally and uh, and even aging it uh, in barrels i mean most of the time let's say that puy uh, if we say as a certain recognition in the world angela so at the end it's like uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, the Saint Emilion red wine from France. Uh, if we're expecting this Saint Emilion, even if it's not uh, an obligation, uh, to have a certain uh, lens and a certain uh, capacity to age. Uh, so we know uh, that at, at all time to find and to give to, to our consumers this possibility to get the wine aged for a certain time and also to have a certain lens in mouth and, and pair with a lot of different meals, as I've described earlier on, uh, the use of, of uh, oak is uh, most of the time necessary. After that, it's the choice of the of the cellar master and what he really uh, uh, would like to, to achieve with his wine. And not only this, but we have to take also uh, um, uh, take into account also a lot of things coming from the from the vineyard what it brings to you, what kind of grapes you, you've got, uh, of course, uh, back from each harvest. So um, it's, it, it's why, in fact, wine is, is uh, so complex to understand because it, it all depends on, on, the, uh, on the owner and the winemaker and, and also the terroir and, and a lot of things that are actually put all together to achieve something. Um, but, uh, but no, just to answer to your question, it's not mandatory. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, you mentioned that so yeah, the oak is very important for aging. So what would you say would be the ideal time to consume this wine? You said it, you could keep it for a, long, uh, a little while, but what would be the best time to drink it? So currently we are delivering uh, the 2016 vintage. I don't know, Angela, if uh, you still have 2015 maybe tasted in your in your in your shop, so if 16 has already uh, moved in, and, and uh, do, do you know this, or you don't know, maybe? I believe everybody has 2016 normally. Just wanna check with everyone. Normally that's the, the vintage that we have available online. So, okay. Yeah. So this 2016 has been, um, has been actually shipped uh, end of uh, 2019 to you, to Wine Connection. Um, this is showing you uh, already the work that is done at the estate to give actually uh, already aged wines to uh, the consumers. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's a perfect representation of uh, fantastic uh, uh, kind of wine growers we need to work with because those kind of guys, they know that to offer a perfect uh, wine uh, to 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 you, to, to, to Singapore consumers and to wine connections, they need to get them aged already uh, quite for a long time in their cellars. So it means that this, um, uh, this uh, wine, uh, after having been made for a period of 12 months, have been kept for another two years, nearly, uh, a little bit more some, on some occasions, uh, in the cellar. Uh, so why? Uh, most, I mean, I would say that the answer is very simple. It's just to get uh, the, the, the already uh, some pleasure to taste it and to drink it uh, as soon as it reaches uh, the, the, the shops. So that's the reason why we are delivering today 16. And we will try to keep on uh, distributing uh, those kind of, of, I mean, this kind of wine with a certain uh, vintages that have already been been there for a long time to really give, according to us, the best representation of this wine after a minimum two years in bottle. Um, so to uh, give a, a reply to your questions, then it can be uh, drunk now without any problem. And as apparently quite a lot of people are saying today, uh, it's good and, and uh, enjoyable today. So it's good, uh, but it can be also aged and I will say, you can easily age it for another three years, uh, maybe another maximum five years. We can go even more. I, I would say it, it can even age uh, for, for longer. 
well, in Singapore, we know that it's quite complicated to to um, to uh, store uh, wines for a long time, and uh, the the the, um, the environment is sometimes not very really well adapted. Uh, very hot and and very not easy, of course, to keep the wines uh, for a long time in our cellar. Uh, so that's the reason why uh, actually we are delivering this kind of wine that have been already aged for a long time in the cellar. Uh, but I would say for another three years, no problem. You will still have a great, great moment with this wine within, uh, within the next few years. All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, so if anybody uh, has ordered maybe one or two or um, even more other bottles, if you guys want to keep it, you can keep it again for a few more years or enjoy it now as most people are doing right now. Uh, I'm going to go around and see if anybody has any questions. I'm going to check maybe with, let me see, Miss Marie, are you ready? I'm going to unmute you in three, two, okay. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Nicolas. Bonjour, Hi. Marie. Bonjour, Marie. Yeah, just want to check with you if there is the best temperature to drink it because, like you see, the temperature in Singapore changes very quickly. Like my first sip of the wine versus now, there is a difference already. So, just wondering, should I put it in yeah. an ice bucket? Yeah. Should I just leave it out? Or what should I do with it? Yeah, you are totally right, Marie. It's uh, and that's the reason why it's sometimes complicated to to taste wines in your in your country. We know that when when we've done with Angela uh, recently last year, we we've organized a big tasting in in the shops, and we were seeing that the wines were changing quite a lot, uh, depending on of course the temperature, uh, the ice that we <laughs> that we that we had, and it's very complicated. But it, it's also um, the, the best representation of a great wine. It, it is because uh, it, it's, it's going to change depending, of course, of the temperature um, that you are drinking it. Um, I would say, according to me, uh, the more you're drinking this wine uh, very cold, the less you will have, in fact, the aromas uh, getting out uh, of the wine, of the nose. Um, so it's always a balance. But if you want to enjoy and really enjoy this wine, uh, you have to, to, according to me, not to drink it too, too cold. And it, it should not be too frozen to, um, to enjoy it. But the difficulty also is that if you are drinking it and, and if it is too hot, you will lose the freshness and the minerality that uh, we would like uh, to show you. But at the end, because it's a well-balanced wine, I would say that at all time, you. I hope you will find some interesting characters um, and, and that you will still enjoy the wine. But yes, for sure, Marie, I'm sorry. Uh, but depending on the temperature, you will have a lot of, uh, a lot of, lot of differences. Um, according to me, it's not easy, but between 10 and 10, 14 degrees, uh, not too cold, not, not eight, not maybe six, eight, but 10, 12, 14, between 10 and 14 degrees, the wine will really gives you the best uh, out of its characters. Cool. Thank you, Nicolas. Pleasure, Marie. Thank you, Mary. I actually had a, lot, a little question before you, uh, you mute. Have you ever had any Pouilly Fusé wine? Is this the first time you've had it? Or is it a, uh, just something that you've already discovered in the past and you wanted to have another glass of it? <laughs> Honestly, Angela, I'm not very, I can't really remember the wines I drink. My husband, Jovan, is actually there. He remembers the wine that we drink. So I guess the question should go to him. Because he remembers all the wine that I like. So I'll, I'll leave him to answer that question. Okay, okay. So I'll swing by Jovan. Uh, are you ready, Jovan? <laughs> yeah, close, close. He's trying to, a uh, question. I think, yes. Uh, 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 okay, okay. I uh, will see you with class first. All right. Yeah, actually, it's not so much a question, it's just uh, uh, catching on to the last point. I think when I got this email from Wine Connection about this wine, it reminded me that probably 23 years ago, so in the late 90s uh, in Germany, I was working in Germany, I was drinking this wine, and I thought it was sort of a white wine. So when I got this email, it was like a blast from the past. I thought, oh, I have to try it again. <laughs> anyway, that's all for myself. Good. Not disappointed too much uh, about the difference between uh, uh, the past and now? 
<laughs> yeah, if I could just remember what happened last week, certainly not what <laughs> how the taste of the wine was. But yeah, it is still something sort of different from from the regular Chardonnays or you know the, yes. the other stuff. Yes, yeah. I agree with you. But you have we, to you have to um, you have to remember close that it's uh, the same family for for already seven generations. So I think mm. uh, it's one of the best representation also of what France is, is able to deliver. Something where the, the different uh, generations have uh, brought something to the, to the wine, to the same wine, yeah. and to the same cuvee for quite a long time. Uh, well, today, nowadays, it's difficult mm. sometimes to, to explain all of this because the people and consumers are really looking to change, have new things, discover new mm. tastes and so on. Um, but for me, it is a, how could we say, uh, une valeur sûre. Uh, how do we say that, Angela? In, uh, in, uh, valeur in sûre is, well, a sure, sure, val sure value, is that what? Sure value, yes, yeah, sure value. It's something that on, you, on can you can count on, definitely. On, you can count on, exactly, yes. I enjoyed. All right, thank you, Klaus. I'm glad it reminded you a bit uh, of the past and uh, sort of uh, bring back some good memories, we hope. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to check with uh, Giovan. Uh, if you're ready, I'm going to meet you now regarding the what, well, what Marie said. <laughs> All right. Are you unmuted? Ah. Just to turn him on his uh, yes, yeah. his microphone. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hi, Nicola. Hi, Jovan. Yeah. It's... Very pleased to uh, to welcome you in this live tasting. Thank you Thank for you being much. there. The the wine is fantastic. Uh, it, it, it's it, it's quite surprising, really. Um, I think I, I think we Marie and I are pleasantly surprised with with, with the wine. I'm very pleased, Jovan. Yeah, which and, is the uh, reason why we can't stop drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> but don't don't stop then don't stop no problem yeah. <laughs> we, we, we've, we've tried um, the the other right, right at the start during the introduction uh, I think it's polyfume polyfume yeah um, which is slightly lighter and um, I, I, I hesitate to use the word diluted uh, but it's slightly oh, well it's it's a bit more lighter and and um, less flavorful than this um, this is this is quite good well let, let's be honest Jovan Puyi um, Fumé even if it has the same name uh, in the beginning Puyi Puissé and Fumé very very different uh, mm. from one to each other I mean they they are very different Puyi Fumé is coming from the Loire Valley so you are in the west part of France not in the east part as Puyi Fumé also it used uh, a different grape, totally great, different varietal, that is Sauvignon Blanc uh, in Puy Fumé instead of Chardonnay. So at the end of it, you, you, it is totally normal to, to get a, a, a different uh, uh, wine at the end. Uh, but I can assure you one thing, well, we are not there to talk about it now, but there is a lot of great Puy Fumé existing in mm -hmm. France. And, uh, and if Angela, would like me to, to, to source a Puy Fumé for her, I will be pleased to do it and, and start a new life tasting within a few months with you with a Puy Fumé. Yeah. That you will enjoy, Jovan. That you will enjoy. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, I mean, this, this, is, this is particularly enjoyable um, because we, Marie and I drink quite a lot of Chardonnay, um, particularly Australian Chardonnay, which is quite, ah, str yes. quite strong, robust. Yes. You know, it's, a, it's like a punch in the face, you know. Um, yes, yes. But, but this is this is quite approachable. Um, it, it's it's floral, it's perfumey, um, and I, I think it's more elegant um, than, than than Australian Chardonnay. So I mean, well done. I, merci, merci beaucoup. I, I I agree with you, and very nice comment. Uh, do not hesitate to really push those comments to to to, to wine connection and uh, <laughs> to all their consumers. Uh, you are great ambassadors today. I don't know if Angela made the selection be, uh, before, but it's, it's quite uh, it's quite amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jimin, for that comment. Welcome, I'm, welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are enjoying it a lot. I just have a random question. Are you guys both watching the live session on two separate devices? <laughs> yeah. 
two separate devices, two separate places. <laughs> we are not in the same household now. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, both of you enjoy it. That's that's the that's the main part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you for your comments on the uh, on the wine. Then. Greatly appreciated, I think, by Nicholas. <laughs> it is. Let me see if anybody else had a question regarding uh, this wine or maybe I, I actually have a, a good, uh, let's say, uh, wordplay to remember uh, the difference between both. Just remember, it's got an S in it. So S stands for South. So when you think Puy Fusé, south near Burgundy, if you see Puy Fumé, it's more in the north in the Loire Valley. Just a fun fact tip for those <laughs> who are Angela. looking at the wines one day. <laughs> Great. All right. Let me see if maybe Mr. Melvin, who joined us a little bit later during the tasting, has any questions or maybe wants to hear a bit of information that he missed at the beginning. All right, Melvin, ready? I'm unmuting you. Uh, hi, Nicholas. Bonjour. Hello. Yeah, I uh, I missed the earlier part. A uh, big fan, big fan of uh, French wine. Uh, always on the top part. Um, Second town, uh, uh, Chablis. Uh, you are in the Loire Valley, uh, north west, I think, right? Is it a cool climate or or is uh is a Mediterranean climate? I'm really sorry. I, I do not. If he was asking if it was, uh, is the, the area more of a cool climate or maybe a bit more of a Mediterranean climate? No, it's not a Mediterranean climate and um, it's not also uh, an Atlantic climate. Um, so you, so you have, you are really in the, in the, in the, in the what we call the center of France where, uh, uh, we are uh, harvesting um, mono varietal uh, wines. Uh, for the red, we have two main varietals in, in the Burgundy, Gamay and Pinot Noir. And, and for the white, only Chardonnay. Uh, why? It's because those varietals are really well adapted to this kind of climate. That is a... a well, it's, it has to, to support some um, quite uh, intense frozen periods during the winter. It has also uh, to support some very hot uh, temperature because we are in the real center. We do not have um, uh, any humidity. Uh, so it's, um, it's, it's a very particular terroir. Puy uh, Fusé is in the south, so you've got a little bit more, of course, uh, high temperatures. Uh, well, what can I say? It's, uh, it's, uh, I, I don't know what to say. Maybe, maybe Angela, you might help me. It's a bit more, I guess, a continental style of climate where it you is. have really, really cold winters and really, really hot summers. So you have those really big different exactly. temperatures between uh, the two seasons, but not as much humidity exactly. as you would have, obviously, with the oceanic climate or Atlantic mm -hmm. climate near the, near the border, like in Bordeaux, for example. Definitely, and that's the reason why you actually find some different kind of uh, vitals that you do not have in all of the regions uh, that we've been talking either before or Bordeaux just now, um, that that are also uh, much better adapted to the to the climate and to the continental climate that we are talking about. Okay, so uh, it's not. Uh climate so i think you are in a high elevation not really no not really uh, uh it depends what you're talking about but we are f uh, yes there are some few eels there uh, of course in puy um, i would not uh, i don't know exactly let me find out if i can find really in puy where it uh, it goes uh, to the maximum uh, they are they are not very big here Hills. Um, what is important sometimes in the in, in in a nice terroir is to have some hills that gives the, the possibility when it rains to really drain and and, and really uh, brings water in fact to all uh, all your vineyards and of course depending on the terroir it it, it gives uh, something uh, very different 
um, to, to, to the grapes, the varietals and so on. Uh, but no, it's, it's, not, um, it's not an area where there are some very important uh, uh, altitude, and there is not a, a big altitude in, in, uh, in Burgundy in general. Uh, less than, than you can find in, uh, in Bordeaux, for example, uh, less than uh, you can find in Champagne also, um, and less than you can find also in Languedoc, where, where the altitudes are, are a little bit uh, higher. Okay, last question. Is there a classification for uh, that region? Is there a classification for the Puy Fissé? Yeah. Yes, it's an AOC uh, that is part, as I've explained, in Burgundy, you have five regions uh, that, that are quite well known. Uh, the first one in the top north is Chablis, uh, dedicated to, to, to white wines only, and uh, with a lot, a lot of minerality. The minerality is really what we are getting out of the Chablis wines. wines. Hello? Can, I'm, I'm just sharing. You. I'm just sharing your screen. Uh, sharing my screen. Sorry to show you where it is. <laughs> ah yes, yes. Okay, fantastic, great. So you see near near Auxerre, where where you see Auxerre, it's Chablis. There, when you have Dijon, just a little bit down. So we are we are here uh, just considering the pink. I mean the dark pink uh, color. Okay, that's the burgundy. So in the burgundy, the top is Chablis, uh, where nearby Auxerre. Then uh, down near Dijon, you've got what we call the first part is called the, the la Côte de Nuit. Then you go down, you got the la Côte uh, Chalonnaise, which is in the middle. Yes, over there, exactly, Angela, perfect. And then the rest of it that goes down uh, south is what we call the Maconnais. Well, Maconnais is mainly because you've got a main big city in the middle called Macon, and that because of course the Macon uh, Macon. Uh, um, region is, is, uh, is, is quite famous, mainly dedicated to white wines, just to, to tell. Macon is very well known for, for white wines. And in, really in the middle of the Maconnais, you've got uh, also, uh, and you agree, I agree with you, Melvin, you have also some, uh, let's say, hills. Uh, and then on top of it, you've got the, 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 the Pouilly village with the Pouilly Fissé. So, uh, that, that's the way it's structured. So it's an AOC as we described. Uh, Puy is an AOC dated from 1936. It's been recognized as an AOC from 1936. Out of many uh, AOCs that we have in Burgundy, because uh, it's more than 100 uh, appellations that we have in, uh, in Burgundy. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Melvin. I don't know uh, if it was precise enough or not, it's, it's complicated, you know? Yeah, 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 I, I, I guess as much. Uh, yeah, especially uh, uh, the Burgundy region, I'm more familiar in the west of France. Uh, Burgundy is very complicated. Uh, so, and that's, that's the reason why for us and for Wine Connection, this wine was offering some... You're a little bit cut off there, Nicholas. Mm -hmm. A little bit for, from a white wine and from a burgundy white wine. Ah, sorry, I'm still you're there. Back. You're back, you're back. I'm back, I'm back, okay. Uh, I was just saying that um, that's, it's, it's because of this complexity that we've decided actually with Wine Connection to, to get this wine into the selection because we think that, uh, that it really brings for the price uh, a fantastic balance between uh, what we are really looking from burgundy wines, meaning the minerality that we can find in the Chablis, and also the very uh, complex and, and, and uh, white wines from, from the Côte de Nuit or, or la, la Côte Chalonnaise in, in the same time, Côte de Nuit, uh, much more. Um, and it's a good balance for, for great quality and price profile. And that's why we've tried to simplify a little bit the offer by bringing this wine into you, consumers, hoping that, of course, uh, we are in line with your wishes and requirements. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much, Melvin, uh, for those questions. Uh, I'm going to meet you now. Just want to check if anybody else had any other last questions that they would ask, would like to ask Nicholas as we're reaching the end of our masterclass. 
So if you guys have other questions or maybe other comments or feedbacks that you would like to make uh, to Nicholas, please let me know now by either waving your hand or uh, sending a message through the chat. All right, let me see. Dun, dun, dun. No more notifications. Okay. I guess everybody's questions have been answered. If once again, if you have any other questions that happen to come to mind after this session, please do let me know, uh, and I will send the questions over to Nicholas to have them answered for you. I uh, will. Yeah. Within the shortest possible time, Angela. Yes, boss. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, all right, so since we've reached the end of the session, I just wanted to check if everybody, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to do a small screenshot of everyone at the end with their wine glasses full and raised. Just want to check if, you, if you're too camera shy and don't want to show up, no problem, but I'll still do the screenshot. All right, got Roger, we've got SL10, maybe Ivy and Melvin are a bit shy. It's all right. Okay, are you guys ready? One, two, perfect. Okay, got it. <laughs> Hello? Ooh. Yep. All right, perfect. Got it, got it. Okay, well, I'd like to thank you all. Thank you very much, Nicholas, for coming in today with us and to sh about sharing your knowledge regarding Chateau Pouilly and the Appalachians. I hope everybody learned a few fun facts today and appreciated the wine as well. Um, I'd like to thank you guys all for participating uh, once again. And uh, if Nicholas has a few words that he'd like to share at the end, no problem. Go ahead. <laughs> well, just... Uh, to thank you everyone and uh, wishing uh, us to see us uh, soon uh, when the confinement and all this confinement will be over. Um, I've been coming uh, quite often to Singapore to really promote all those wines including this Chateau Puy and I hope to do it again soon uh, if Angela invites me because sometimes they say, oh, it's, uh, she doesn't invite uh, all the time. So I have to. Uh, I've been very pleased to be part of uh, of this live tasting, and um, I hope to see you again very soon in Singapore. All right. Well, perfect. Thank you very much, Nicholas. I'm going to close the live session now. And once again, thank you everybody for participating and have a good evening uh, tasting your Chateau Bouilly or eating or drinking with food or without, whichever way works for you. And everybody stay safe, stay healthy, and see you guys on the next live masterclass. <laughs> yeah, All right. Goodbye, huh? Oh, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> goodbye. Good wine. Bye oh, bye. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, bye, thanks. everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs>